Chapter 14 Which You? Which World? Your Daily Reality as the Expression of Specific Probable Events The brain can be called simply the physical counterpart of the mind. By means of the brain, the functions of the soul and intellect are connected with the body. Through the characteristics of the brain, events that are of non-physical origin become physically valid. There is a definite filtering and focusing effect at work then. Practically speaking, you do indeed form the appearance that reality takes through your conscious beliefs. Those beliefs are used as screening and directing agents, separating certain non-physical probable events from others and bringing them into three-dimensional actuality. Other probable events could just as well become physically experienced ones. Those beliefs about yourself form your own self-image and define your concepts of what is possible or not possible for you. You will choose from those non-physical probable events, therefore, only those you feel you are in accord with. Because of your psychological and psychic structure, there is within the rich makeup of your being a literally endless variety of what you may call probable selves. In one reality or another, these will all be experienced. In your present existence, however, you will utilize only those psychological characteristics that you believe you possess. So, you see, the personality cannot be defined as being thus and so. The physical constitution of the body follows your beliefs, and so all of its sense data will faithfully mirror the beliefs that direct its activity. In certain terms, hypnosis is simply an exercise in the alteration of beliefs, and only too clearly shows that sense experience follows expectations. The quote-unquote you that you presently conceive yourself to be represents the emergence into physical experience of but one probable state of your being, who then directs corporeal life and quote-unquote frames and defines all sense data. When your ideas about yourself change, so does your experience. Even the intimate body experience alters. You may say that you are you, but which you are you? In the most personal terms, each individual creates his own world. The biological equipment of your creaturehood directs your mass experience enough so that agreement is reached, but only along certain general lines. The overall private experience that you perceive forms your world. But which world do you inhabit? For if you altered your beliefs and therefore your private sensations of reality, then that world seemingly the only one, would also change. You do go through transformations of beliefs all the time, and your perception of the world is different. You seem to be no longer the person that you were. You are quite correct. You are not the person that you were, and your world has changed, and not just symbolically. Often, you fall into lapses, in which you actually pull in your consciousness, so to speak, and experience life in a lesser fashion. In such a state, you do not seem to experience yourself directly, and indeed, in the midst of what you think of as the waking state, you act in the most mechanical of fashions, following habit and being less aware of sensual stimuli. On such occasions, your beliefs usually lose their edge, the directions you give to your body are not clear, and the world seems fuzzy. This is often a time of deep unconscious activity, when new latent probable characteristics are biding their time, so to speak, waiting for emergence. In your terms, probable events are brought into actuality by utilizing the body's nerve structure through certain intensities of will or conscious belief. These beliefs obviously have another reality beside the one with which you are familiar. They attract and bring into being certain events instead of others. Therefore, they determine the entry of experienced events from an endless variety of probable ones. You seem to be at the center of your world, because for you, your world begins with that point of intersection where soul and physical consciousness meet. In surface terms, the sense of quote-unquote I that you possess is the result of constantly emerging probable identities, given continuity in time through the physical apparatus of the body with its built-in intervals of nerve reaction. You only remember the portion of your identity that is physically realized. 
those portions that are drawn into corporeal pattern. This is the result of the focusing and yet limiting behavior of the physical brain, for effective survival behavior in your reality depends upon time reactions. The nerve patterns' activity therefore causes the illusion of a present in which your consciousness appears focused and alert. In certain terms, quote-unquote future events exist now, but they are too fast. They jump over the nerve endings too quickly, and physically you cannot perceive or experience them as yet. Impulses possess a far different reality than physicists or biologists suppose. As you think now, the quote-unquote past is still occurring. The quote-unquote drag still leaps the synapses, but again is not physically recorded. Past events continue. Consciously, you only experience portions of events with your corporeal structure, yet the structure itself records them. In such a way, the cells retain their memory, though you do not perceive it, and the body is aware of so-called future occurrences, though as a rule you do not consciously sense this. At other levels of psychic activity, however, such knowledge is also available to you, but only when you disconnect your experience from the time-activated neuronal structure, and this you can do through various alterations of consciousness, often quite spontaneously adopted. Many such states can give you a far greater direct experience with the nature of your non-corporeal reality than any normally conscious questioning. Which you? Which world? You can to some extent discover for yourself the other probable yous that are a portion of your being. Now, future events are also your selection of probable ones, however, and many occurrences in which you are involved speed past you too quickly for your neuronal structure. They are not served up to you as your present. They represent your experience on other than physical levels. My dear friend Rupert has to some extent given an analogy of this in his first Oversoul 7 book, a novel. You perceive a certain event as present. Your beliefs give it entry through the nerve synapses and attract it. It then seems to become the past. You have only tuned into a portion of it physically, though. The past event continues to exist with its own quote-unquote future, which you may or may not perceive according to which probable action you pull into your next experiences of actuality. The past does have its own past, present, and future, therefore. From a given past event, you will only materialize a particular future, but the event itself continues and possesses a dimensionality of its own, or rather, a multidimensionality that you also possess. You can dip into cellular memory, for example. Using memory, you follow but one recognized sequence of remembered events backward. There are elements in your past that are as unpredictable, however, as the elements in your future now appear to be. There is creativity in your past waiting for you, even as there is in your future. But to utilize such experiences, you must learn to alter your beliefs, and to some degree escape from that particular kind of limited conscious focus that you habitually use. The physical structure itself contains within it the necessary prerequisites for what you would call evolutions of consciousness, and even for, within certain limits, the organization of experience in ways that might seem quite alien to you now. Sense data can be organized in different fashions. Mechanisms and pathways exist, making it quite possible for you to see sound or hear color, although that is not your primary habit at this time. In certain terms, time intervals are jumped, as when a quote-unquote past smell or sight is suddenly perceived with present vividness, though you would say it has already occurred in the past. Under particular conditions, a memory may suddenly become more real than the event of the present moment, and so rush again into your current experience as validly as when it was first lived, and even seem to blot out the occurrences of the moment. This could not happen if your physical structure did not have built-in mechanisms allowing it to, and if, under certain conditions, the normal intervals between the synapses of the nerve cells could not be leaped in a different fashion. In the same way, a future experience may also be physically perceived in your present. Now, beneath your usual consciousness, your physical organism can react to future events without your knowledge, as it can to past ones. 
In such cases, the intensity of the initially non-physical event is enough to break through normal neuronal patterns. If you are aware of such a future episode, you will be forced to react to it as a conscious being. In any case, your temporal structure will respond whether or not you are aware of the reasons for such behavior. The future incident may then occur in its time sequence and you recognize it through memory, in which case your reactions in that future present will be altered because of the seemingly past memory. In your terms, the event may never come to pass, however, because it may be arising from a probable past that was once your present, but from which you have diverged. This is one of the reasons why psychics' predictions often do not seem to bear out, for at every point you do indeed have the free will, through your beliefs, to alter your experience. Your beliefs form the pivot of your present experience. Now, in your terms, practically speaking, probable events seem to make more sense when you think of them as latent future ones. The fact remains that there are probable past events that, quote-unquote, can still happen within your personal previous experience. A new event can literally be born in the past, quote-unquote, now. On a grand scale, this rarely occurs in such a way that you perceive it. A new belief in the present, however, can cause changes in the past on a neuronal level. You must understand that basically time is simultaneous. Present beliefs can indeed alter the past. In some cases of healing, in the spontaneous disappearance of cancer, for instance, or of any other disease, certain alterations are made that affect cellular memory, genetic codes, or neuronal patterns in the past. In such instances, there is, as easily as I can explain it, a reaching into deep biological structures as they existed at one time. At that point, the probabilities are altered and the condition erased in your present, but also in your past. A sudden or intense belief in health can indeed, quote-unquote, reverse a disease, but in a very practical way, it is a reversal in terms of time. New memories are inserted in place of the old ones, as far as the cells are concerned under such conditions. This kind of therapy happens quite frequently on a spontaneous basis, when people rid themselves of diseases they do not even know they possess. Learning is not simply passed on from living tissue to living tissue. This, your biologists have discovered. But it is also passed on through the body's present corporeal reality, sometimes entirely changing the messages to past cells that in your terms no longer exist. In somewhat the same way, a strong belief in a particular ability generated in the present will reach into the past and affect whatever changes would have had to occur there in order to now make the ability apparent. This is the reason for the results of some experiments being conducted abroad in which accelerated learning takes place, when under hypnosis or otherwise, a present individual is convinced that he or she is, for example, a great painter or a linguist. The present belief activates quote-unquote latent abilities within each person. The biological structure, as it existed in the past, is therefore affected. Experience is built into the organism that it did not have before in your terms. It is a sort of reprogramming, 